Hello, my name is Kelly, and I have a question about square root. I really understand, I think, pretty well how to work with them in general, but I'm unclear how to work with them when negatives are involved. Could you please explain? Thanks. Okay, so you want to know about square roots of negatives. Um, well, let's let's review square roots first real quick. A square root is a number that you multiply by itself to get a number that you're asked about. So for instance, um, say we want to know what the square root of 16 is. The square root of 16 is the number that you multiply by itself to get 16. So in this case, 4. And we know that's true because 4 squared equals 16. So the square root of a number is the number you multiply by itself to get the number. Um, let's do one more example. Say square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3 because 3 times itself is 9. Now when you're dealing with negatives, things aren't quite so simple. And that's because if, for instance, we had, say, the square root of negative 4. Well, we know that the square root of 4 is 2 because 2 squared is 4. So we look at this and we say, oh, well, the square root of negative 4 then must be negative 2, right? Wrong. No way. What is negative 2 squared? Well, negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2. We have an even number of negative signs, so the answer is positive 4. So the square root of negative 4 isn't negative 2. It's obviously not positive 2. So how are we going to get a negative 4 out of taking some number times itself? You can't. You cannot get a number that you multiply by itself to get a negative answer. So the square root of a negative number, for instance, negative 4, is not real. It's, a, it's not a real number. Yeah. Now, you're going to work, about, work on this a little more as you get on into Algebra 2, but let me give you just a little bit of a heads up. Even though a number isn't real, that doesn't mean we can't do something with it. And I know that sounds a little silly, but really there are a lot of things we do with numbers that aren't real. We, we call them imaginary numbers. Well, I didn't write that very well at all, huh? Imaginary. Imaginary numbers are numbers that are the square roots of negatives. And sort of our base, our, our starting imaginary number is the square root of negative 1. The square root of negative 1, again, can't exist because 1 squared is 1, right? So the square root of negative 1 we call i. And we deal with that because there are things you can do with i that make it real. For instance, if I only had i, it's not a real number. It can't exist. But what happens if I get i squared? What happens if I take i that doesn't exist and multiply it by itself? Well, i squared would be the same thing as the square root of negative 1 squared. And if you square a square root, what happens? Well, the square and the square root cancel, and you're left with the number inside, negative 1, which is a real number. So i squared is the real number, negative 1. Now you can see why we might want to worry about dealing with imaginary numbers, because if we do some things with them, they become real numbers. So the short answer to your question is, the square root of a negative number doesn't exist. There aren't any. You can't take a number times itself to get a negative. The long answer is, the number does exist as an imaginary number, and we need to worry about it because we can do things with imaginary numbers that make them into real numbers. In fact, combinations of imaginary numbers and real numbers are used a lot. They're called complex numbers. A complex number is just a real number like 4 plus an imaginary number or minus an imaginary number like, say, 3i. So a complex number is the two together. Imaginary is just the one that doesn't exist on its own. And a real number is a number that you work with every day.